Good. It finally arrived. All of our parts we've been waiting for, our factory Honda OEM parts. There was a handful we needed, 21 I think in total, small little parts to finish up the engine and a few things on the chassis. Uh, big thanks to Revzilla who sent this out. You actually can get OEM parts on Revzilla. I don't think a lot of people realize that, but you can. The holdup though wasn't dumb. It was just, just Honda taking forever to send the parts out. You know how that goes. You know, I was just joking the other day about how now the Japanese bikes are almost like European bikes that take forever. But one of our guys in our Discord has got a KTM 690 he's been waiting over a year for parts for. So month sounds pretty good when you compare it to a year. We'll need to assemble our piston here, install it in the motor, slip the cylinder on, put the head on, bolt everything up, turn it over a few times, you know, all that jazz, make sure it's all happy, and then the engine will be done. And this poor little guy will have a very, very violent and insane life. That's what it's made for, so let's get it going. So to get the piston set up, uh, first thing I did is I actually took it inside and gave it a quick wash off with some soap and water. Forged aluminum piston, won't hurt it. And what I'm gonna do, go ahead and install one of my clips here, my wrist pin clips. Oh, the piston will be like that. So I'm gonna put the one on this side first. I'm just thinking how the engine's oriented over there. That'll make sense in a minute. We can go ahead and install one of them now, then we'll put the piston on and we'll connect the other side up. Should be able to just work this in with our thumbs and fingers. If I have to, I can use a little bit of a screwdriver, but you gotta be real careful not to notch or nick anything on the inside. If you put a few little marks on the outside, not the end of the world, but try to avoid that. When you go to put these in though, we don't wanna orient them the horizontal plane here because as this piston moves up and down really fast, if we had it like that, it would be impossible for this thing to like compress in on itself and pop out. So we'll either put it at the top or the bottom. And so there's a groove at the bottom We'll, uh, we'll set that at the top, just so it's like in the, the best place it could possibly be. I'm gonna just try to walk this thing in here. Smaller piston ones like this, I can usually just do with my fingers. Try really hard not to have it fly across the room. This last little bit, I might have to get a screwdriver to get that in there. Let's see, am I feeling it? Oh, I am feeling it. And I got it right up at the top where I want it to be. Awesome. Get, yeah, the only reason I didn't put it at the bottom is because there is the little relief there to get in there with a pick and take it out. So that's good for that. All right, over here on the engine, let's pull out my wad of stuff here. Put this at top, roughly top dead center, I'm guessing right now. I can actually go and remove these. I went ahead and ordered these head studs. Ari told me you really just need to replace the nut, uh, nut and washer, I wanna say, but I just, th these were pretty cheap, so I just went and ordered a whole set of them. You couldn't get these off, you just put two nuts on it and jam them together, you know, that old trick. I've stuffed some good clean rags back down in here because we don't want to lose parts. I'm gonna put a little bit of, this is some assembly lube. Just a thin layer of this. You don't need to like lob it onto anything, I feel like, but some people do. You'll see now why I put the clip in this side because when we look at this piston here, now you notice this piston is not labeled front and back. It doesn't matter if we can look at though here, we can see these are the reliefs for the valves and you see some smaller ones and some larger ones. The larger ones will always be on the intake side. I've put my clip on the opposite side here, so now that I'm in a good position, I'll need to spin the engine around. Again, we'll put a little bit of assembly lube down here. All right, you just stay right there for a minute. We have a new wrist pin. JE sent us, came with the piston. Let's put some goop on it. Smear it around. All right, just bottomed out over there. This is what we're doing right here is while we have the rags here so we don't lose this little clip down in the engine. Now, if it did fall in the engine, people go, oh my, it's actually, it's usually not the end of the world. It's usually just right somewhere on top and you get a magnet and you get it back, it's fine. Oh, the battery's dying. Oh no, the battery's dying on the camera. Okay, new battery. I'm gonna do this bare hand now and you're probably not gonna see anything because my hands are gonna be completely in the way, but you saw me put the other one in, right? Oh yes, Jake, we saw that. All right, well, this is the same thing. So, you know, you saw it once. You, You've seen it, you've seen it, right? All right, that's what everyone says, that's the saying. That's in a good position, yes! So you can totally put the piston rings on before you install the piston, but you see you have to kind of manhandle a little bit, so I think it's nicer to go ahead and do it before. I don't have a problem putting the rings on once it's up here. Uh, in fact, it's even a little bit easier since I removed all those studs. Now I gotta put the rings on, the rings! First thing you should do with your rings is get them all gapped. If you've done it and you know how to do it, then do it. If uh, you don't own a ring grinder and it's five bucks to pay the guy who bore the cylinder to gap your rings, get him to do it. Before we start installing these piston rings, I'm just gonna take a little cap full of oil and drizzle a little in here. And this will just work its way down. And if we put a little extra and it spills into the engine, well, that's where it goes anyway, right? So, <laughs> so you've got grooves in here for three rings, but there's actually five because the oil ring is made up of three little rings. This is the oil expander ring. We have to make sure when we put this together, these two ends don't overlap each other. We want them to butt up against each other, but not do any of that jazz. In the case of this engine, we want these pointed down 
like it's making an M, not a W. These, this oil rings are really easy. Important thing here when we're putting them on is where the gaps are. We need to make sure that these are all in different sort of positions as we build this up. On two strokes, you'll actually see little pins in here that hold this in the correct position because you don't want a piston gap going across a port. But on a four stroke, they don't have those. So we try to sit them at different positions. The reality is these things can move a little bit anyway. I'm gonna basically put the gap of this first one right back there towards the intake. I'm gonna take a little bit of oil here. This is the next ring. I'm gonna just do a little wipe through it. And these oil rings here, there's like shelves. One goes on top, one goes on the bottom. And they don't really have a up or down or positional. They can kind of be whatever. I'm sure there are some that need to be a certain way, but these ones are unmarked. So uh, that one there, I'm gonna put these two, one here and then the upper one over here. These guys are flexible enough. It's pretty easy just to kind of put them in a spot and work them around. Okay, and you are in. Good. This don't have to be like, don't have to get crazy like trying to degree them or anything, you know? It's like, oh, God, are they exactly where we need them to be? Like, get them close. They're gonna, like I said, they're gonna move. Yeah, that one's there. We'll put this one over here. Maybe a little finicky fishing them all into the same groove, but they all will fit. They're springy and we'll kind of double check, look around. Yep, it looks like a little oil control ring if I've ever seen one. One of these should be marked T2. Yep, T2 is our next ring up. Run a little oil around it. This guy I'm gonna clock or about there. Lettering should be up. Walk it down. It's right now it's in the wrong gap, but that's fine. I don't wanna like overstretch these to get them into the gap that they need to be in, if that makes sense. Rather than kind of working more naturally, like kind of stair step their way into it. I've never broken one of these. I've seen it happen. Oh, look at that. We pushed in a little, a little bit of Earl squished out. But there we go. All right. And then I'll put the last one over here. Oh, it doesn't necessarily, don't think T, T and T2 necessarily always mean what, mean that. They can mean whatever. Sit that one kind of over there. Happy with everything is. Happy the way it's looking. All right. Let's move on. Slip on the new base gasket. Guess I could have done this already. I'm gonna go install these studs now. I'm gonna take a little dab of oil, not much. Just put a light little bit over the threads. You don't wanna glob this up on there because then it'll like literally hydraulically lock it. And we don't need to tighten these up. Uh, we just need to snug them. The torque that we apply to the top will be what it needs. There was a thicker threaded part. That's the part that goes bottom. I grabbed my cylinder here. I just gave it a real big spray out with the air compressor to make sure we got any bits left in there. I'm gonna take a little bit of assembly lube. Just put a little dot of that in there. Take a little cap full of just the motor oil. I'm gonna kind of make a little slurry of them here together. Finger that all around in here. Doesn't need to be a big glob of it. All the way down in here. Nice and coated up in there. A slightly trickier thing here. As I bring the cylinder down, compress these rings with my fingers as I'm slipping them over. What you can do is if you're very careful, you can push like with a flathead against the rings. I wouldn't go like sideways into them. Just a little bit to kind of make sure they're sitting in their grooves. Okay, I think I've got those two in. All right, there we go. We're, we're slid through before we slide it all the way down. Though, I remember to get my timing chain and pull this up. Hold it like that. There. There we go. All right. Yeah, it went all the way down. That's what we want to see. Watch this here. If we kind of put some pressure on this as we spin this, we should be able to. Yep. There we go. Well, look at that. Woo! We got her in. I'm going to wipe off some of that excess because obviously some of that is just unnecessary in there. Put in my dowel. I'll do a head gasket for the big bore kit. I'm gonna try, I'm trying to figure out which way the valve, valve guide goes in here. You can kind of see the chain guide. There's a little nub. It needs to sit right in this groove right here. There's also a place in the bottom. It basically is a wedge and it goes into a little place down there. This is, this is one of those silly things you don't want to forget when you go to put this in because <laughs> I've never done it. I've seen people do it. They get this thing all simple and they go, oh, oh. Yeah, both valve guides are like too far out to start. So you gotta kind of... Wrangle them into place. All right. Before we go too far down, because the chain is all wonky and crazy. Get you. you. Use a big flathead and kind of press against it to kind of get it into position. All right. Be sure to give this video a like. 
<laughs> Actually, for real. Yeah, sorry, I was using that. Uh, none of y'all ever like these videos anymore. And like, like 70, 80% of you guys aren't subscribed that watch. It does help. Please do it. I know it doesn't really matter anymore on YouTube, but it just it helps for other reasons. Please do. Thank you. Now I can open up a bunch of new Honda parts. You really should put a little bit of oil on the threads of those studs. Not a lot, again, you do too much oil, you'll hydrolock stuff, right? But I really can't get to them anymore either. We'll dab with my finger of oil here. We'll just put like a little dot on each one of these and I'll make a piece of floss here and this should soak up any excess. There's just a little bit still in the threads, not even a whole lot, just more of a light residue. But you kind of need that to get the real proper torque. All right, let's do this without dropping these into the motor. Take you and do a little something like this. These ones are a little easier because if I drop it, it's not really going anywhere, but somewhere I can easily get like that. Just immediately dropped it. Because I wanted to show you guys, it was a demonstration. That's why I did it. I'm just going to stick them on the magnet like this, right in the center. And twirl them down. And they, obviously they come off because you know, just get one or two threads on, it's fine. Bring them all the way down. Give them a little extra snug up with this before we actually start torquing them. I'm also gonna go ahead and stick these side bolts in here. I'm not gonna tighten them or anything. I'm just gonna drop them in and give them a couple turns. 38 foot pounds is what I've been told. I've stuck my torque wrench here at 25 pounds to start, kind of sneak up on it. In fact, I'm actually gonna, that didn't click yet. I'm gonna give those, each one of those a few of what I just did. Always nice to bring it in good and even. Something you can't really overdo. Let's go up to 38. Woo! And now I can torque down these side bolts. We always rotate the engine the direction it spins counterclockwise. It'll pull up on the chain while we turn it. We should see an F and then a T. Well, there's the F. And here comes the T. Oh, no. That's where we want the engine. All right, my Twaka Waga cams. Let's see here. We've got exhaust intake for good measure here i'm going to put another little we don't need much a little dab of very tacky assembly loop a little dab on the cams themselves and work that around this exhaust it's got a little dot at the top What we're looking for here is that these lines are straight across. There's a line here and here. They're less prominent on these ones than they are the factory cams, uh, but we need to make sure that that's straight across. The thing is, if it's one notch off, I know you might think, oh, is that, is that you sure that's right? You, can, you know, like one notch is actually fairly noticeable. Uh, in fact, here I'll show you just for fun. We'll, we'll make it one notch off just to show you I'm not crazy, not completely at least. So watch, we'll do one tooth over. You see what I'm saying? Fairly noticeable. We need to make sure there's enough pins between these two dots here at the top. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. Backwards, one, two, three, 12, 13, 14, 14, 15. And that is the number it is supposed to be on this one. So that does look like we have them correct. I'm just gonna give it a quick double check that we're still on T. We are. So those cams are in the correct position. That means I can stick my caps back on. Don't worry, I have a very calibrated hand. You probably don't, don't do that. Do it the right way. There's this little guy right here, which probably doesn't have to be there. If I was a race guy, I would consider taking this thing off and just not running it because uh, extra weight, bro. Click snug, and in there, click snug. Woo! We need to take up the slack in the chain, 
by reinstalling the chain guide tensioner. We I got a new gasket for it too. Uh, I've actually had this thing off a couple times without changing the gasket and it never leaked. So is it absolutely necessary? No, but I have had it off like three or four times. So why not? So what do you do, right? You just come and you slam this in. No, no, no. You first must remove the little center bolt because I'm clever, I left this hand tight. In the center here, there's a little flat head. So you'll need a little flat head screwdriver. And when we screw this in, if you watch the end here, it's like you're screwing into it. You see, oh, look at that little oil. I caught it there. See how I just brought the tension in? So we want to hold it like that while we insert it. I'm just running the bolts in on my freshly painted parts that I just did. Oh, these look so good. These came out so well. If you missed that, I painted all this. Right now, it's kind of all smudgy from oil. <laughs> We'll clean that up. Snug you down, snug you down, and then watch as I release this here. Excess chain slack, this can move up and down. All right, watch, we're gonna start letting this out. Okay, go out naturally. I'm not, I'm not turning it out, I'm letting it come out on its own. See, and there you go. Tensioner's done its job, and then we will put our little cap back over this. There's a little O-ring in there. Make sure that O-ring's in there. So we're almost ready to button everything up, but one really good thing to do here now is we're gonna turn the engine over a few times. We now have the cams installed, we've got the new piston in there, a little higher compression than it was before, plus we have a more aggressive cam. What if there's a problem? What if they collide? We're not gonna know until we turn these over and really cycle everything around. Not to mention, good to see if anything binds up. Not to mention, just good in general. Let's just roll everything around a few times. We shouldn't hear any weird noises, any clunk, and everything should be pretty good. We're gonna get that, I'm using, since I'm using a ratchet here, you're gonna get that spin over because of the cams and the spring tension. It looks good though, I'm happy with it. Let's not forget the coolant little hose that goes across here. Let's go like this. Yes, it goes like that. With that, the engine is put together. It's done. It's a unit now. Will it work? Who knows? Something could be catastrophically wrong. We really won't really know until it goes to start. So the next video should be the engine going into the frame and things should just start picking up from there. That video as well as the following video are already out on Patreon. So go over there and check that out. Jump in the Discord. Let's see if anyone's in the Discord right now. Kurt's the only one on here because it's, it's late. But look, you wanna see, look. It, it will probably not blow up. Patreon is only $1 a month. <laughs> and for that $1, you get exclusive video access, early videos, and access to the Discord. <laughs> All right. Wow. See you guys in the next video. Thanks, Kurt.